The men of Apollo 14 came back down to Earth this afternoon. They've covered more than a million miles, and they brought home a load of rocks that may be four billion years old. The splashdown was right on target in the Pacific recovery area. Apollo 14, Apollo 14, this is Houston through Araya 3. How do you read, over? Okay, 14, now you're coming in uh, loud and a uh, little bit of noise through Araya 3. How'd it go? Okay, 14, now uh, you're coming in uh, loud and a uh, little bit of noise through Araya 3. How'd it go? Forces now have a happy landing. from now. There it is, splashdown of Apollo 14. Navy captain, by tradition, last leave his ship. All three now safely in the astronaut's raft and the below decks, flanking up in honor of the astronauts. The three flyers of Apollo 14 are back and safe after a highly successful flight. They brought back about 100 pounds a moon, the biggest haul so far, for geologists and others to pore over and learn more about the origins and structure of the moon and perhaps of the Earth. They landed this afternoon in the South Pacific, due east of Australia, on time and on target, and in sight of the recovery carrier, the New Orleans. The television pictures from the carrier by satellite were the best they've ever been. Too far from the chutes and the site of splashdown. And we see another now. Two helicopters have closed on the splashdown site. And that splashdown should be coming up just very shortly from now. And those big orange and white parachutes, all the life going out of them, their work done. They will be set free. You can see the legs, and now the entire astronaut down into the egress raft, called Lily Pad. Stuart Rusa, to make the next, quite probably Ed Mitchell. And finally, the mission commander, Alan Shepard. Navy captain, by tradition, last to leave his ship. It be a kind of exciting ride at any time, but I'm sure doubly so on an occasion like this. Helicopter, taking his commander's advice, proceeding slowly.
opening now. And here they come, the Apollo 14 astronauts waving. Obviously glad to be back, glad it's over. Looking forward to getting all the way home once again. Posing for pictures now, Ellen Shepard, Ed Mitchell, and Stuart Russo. Today, you were the uh, last man out of the command module. You're also the first American in space. Uh, you have been the earliest and the latest, one of the shortest and qualifying for one of the longest, certainly the shortest. Now, there's some of your friends here that say you can't harken back that far, but uh, how about giving a comparison between uh, the first Mercury mission and the one you just came back from? Well, Jim, well, frankly, I'm not really a student of history. Uh... As you point out, it was a long time ago, and it was a great ride. This last one was a great ride, too. And uh, also, fortunately, it will not be the last ride. There will be other, other flights going, space flights going to the moon and uh, space laboratory and shuttle and so on. But this was a great thrill. There's no question about it. They will remain in quarantine a while, again, to make sure they didn't bring back any moon germs that might be dangerous on Earth even though all the evidence so far is there's no danger of that at all. After they landed, Shepard, at 47, the senior citizen of the space program, put in a little plug for future moon flights by saying there's a lot of rock still left up there. He himself has said nothing, but there is some talk Shepard might go back to his home state of New Hampshire and run for governor. If he did, and if he won, it would be the only state whose governor has been to the moon. Today, all the remain for the Apollo 14 crew was recovery by the USS New Orleans, and that, too, proceeded smoothly. There they are, the three big parachutes, and just a moment ago, you could see the entire operation. First the drogue chutes, then the smaller pilot chutes that pull these big ones out, and there they are. The main chutes that will bring the command module of Apollo 14 safely back to the surface of the Pacific Ocean. There, I believe you can see that the fuel has been dumped from the command module, the burn, actually. You may have noticed that small cloud or trail of smoke leaving the module. Well, that was the automatic burning of the unused fuel on board, so it won't hamper recovery operations after splashdown. The astronauts have to make sure this fuel has burned automatically, and of course, if it hadn't, they would have had to follow up by working manual controls inside that command module that would turn on the burning process. There it is, splashdown of Apollo 14. There from our photo helicopter is a close-up picture of the command module. And you can see that it has been somewhat streaked and discolored by the heat of re-entry to Earth's atmosphere. Helicopter approaching from a downwind position. And there they go, the two other members of the swim team, and between them, the flotation collar package. Thumbs up the sign given by those swimmers to the helicopter, and it moves away. Swimmers now have the color already up at the command module. A good drop right on target, leaving just a few yards for them to bring that package up. And there goes the raft now. That rubber-coated parcel containing what will be the astronaut's raft, technically known as the egress raft. Because there's some concern about moon germs, although not on the part of anyone inside the space program, the astronauts are still subject to rigid quarantine requirements. The swimmers decontaminate the hatch, and before the astronauts can leave the spacecraft, they're told to put on special biological masks. The first astronaut is about to make his exit from the spacecraft. delay as the astronaut frees himself and there you can see the legs and now the entire astronaut down into the egress raft called lily pad. Stuart Rusa could make the next quite probably at Mitchell and 
Finally, the mission commander, Alan Shepard. Navy captain, by tradition, the last to leave his ship. Even veteran test pilots say they enjoy the next step, the next step being the ride in what's called the Billy Pew Net. Although you can't see them, the astronauts are wearing small life preservers just in case. And again, it was Shepard, the last to leave, to be hoisted aboard the recovery helicopter. As primitive as this mode of transportation may be, it's still an improvement over 10 years ago when Shepard wrapped his arms around a makeshift horse collar to be hoisted aboard. And that was in the Atlantic, this the Pacific, 900 miles south of Samoa and just across the international date line. So Alan Shepard is just a few miles into Wednesday. During the short trip back to the recovery carrier, the USS New Orleans, the astronauts changed into clean flight suits and baseball caps for the welcome aboard ceremony, although the uniform still included those biological masks. After a wave and a salute, and with Shepard leading, the astronauts marched into the first of two isolation trailers, which will carry them back to Houston by Thursday midnight. To have us, I don't think we've had a recovery as uh, handled as efficiently and as speedily and as uh, neat and clean as that one. We were just tickled with it and uh, we appreciate it very much. Of course, uh, we did come kind of close to the target area, but that may be, may be incidental. <laughs> we have had uh, a terrific flight, as the general points out. It's been, it's been uh, just completely super all the way around. We've had a lot of fun. We've had some problems. But uh, I don't think there's any question about the fact that for me, the most thrilling moment is right now, not only because uh, we're back from a trip to the moon, but also because I'm back home. CBS News learned that Ed Mitchell during the flight conducted an experiment in ESP, extrasensory perception, or thought transference. Mitchell Long has been fascinated with that subject, and he arranged the experiment with a Chicago engineer, also an ESP hobbyist. Mitchell concentrated in random order on five cards he took with him, apparently. He'll learn when he gets back whether the Chicagoan got the message. The Apollo 14 astronauts will arrive home in Texas on Friday, but will remain in quarantine until about the end of the month. Space officials, pleased with the success of this mission, now concentrate on plans for July's Apollo 15 mission, which will transport a special moon buggy to the lunar surface.